My name is Miss Kelly and I'm the Youth Librarian at the Bexley Public Library. And today I would like to share with you a very special book. It is called Watercress and it is written by Andrea Wang and illustrated by Jason Chin. And one of the things that makes this book so special is that it has won the 2022 Caldecott Award which means out of all of the books that were published last year in 2021, the judges have decided that this one had the most beautiful illustrations and was deserving of this most prestigious award. One other special thing is that it was written by an Ohio author. So let's go ahead and read the story together, okay? All right. This one is called Watercrest, written by Andrea Wang and illustrated by Jason Chen. Ah, look, I can already see the Ohio landscape. Let's see what the story has to say. We are in the old Pontiac. The red paint faded by years of glinting Ohio sun, pelting rain, and biting snow. The tops of the cornstalk lines that zigzag across the horizon. Mom shouts, look, and the car comes to an abrupt jerking stop. Mom's eyes are as sharp as the tip of a dragon's claw. Dad's eyes grow wide. Watercrest, they exclaim. Two voices heavy with memories. From the depths of the trunk, they unearth a brown paper bag, a ran some rusty scissors, and a longing for China. They haul us out of the back seat. We are told to untie our sneakers, peel off our socks, and roll up our jeans. We have to help them gather it. The water in the ditch is cold. It stings my ankles and the mud squelches between my toes. A car passes by and I duck my head, hoping it's no one I know. My parents cut bunches of the small plant, long stringy stems with leaves round as coins. Do you see the watercress? My big brother yanks watercress up by the handful, roots dripping dirty water onto my shirt and thrusts it close to my face. There are tiny snails clinging to the underside and I squirm away. The bag in my hands grows heavier and heavier with the weight of all the watercress. The paper is soaked and I'm half afraid, half hopeful that the bottom will split sending all the plants back down inside the muck. Finally, we load everything, the soggy bag, my sopping shirt, our sodden selves, into the car and head home. Our original destination is long forgotten, a memory of something unfinished. On the dinner table that night is a dish of watercress, glistening with garlicky oil and freckled with sesame seeds. The mud and the snails are long gone, but I still don't want to eat it, any of it. I only want to eat vegetables from the grocery store. Do you see the watercress in her face? She does not look very happy. Mom and Dad press me to try some. It is fresh, Dad says. It is free, Mom says. But I shake my head. Free is bad. Free is hand-me-down clothes and roadside and roadside trash heap furniture. And now, dinner from a ditch. Mom sighs and disappears into her room returning with an old photo. My family, she says, from before. We stare. Mom never talks about her China family. She points to a small boy, as thin as a stem of watercress. 
my little brother, your uncle. We hold our breaths. Mom never told us what happened to him. See the photo? During the great famine, she says, we ate anything we could find, but it was still not enough. I look from my uncle's hollow face to the watercress on the table, and I am ashamed of being ashamed of my family. I take a bite of the watercress, and it bites me back with its spicy, peppery taste. It is delicate and slightly bitter, like mom's memories of home. Together, we eat it all and make a new memory of watercress. The end. And that was Watercress by Andrea Wang and illustrated by Jason Chin. Thank you so much for joining me today, friends. If you'd like to stick around, I'm going to read a little bit from the author's note and illustrator's note. Otherwise, take care. All right, friends, we have just finished reading Watercress, but I thought you might like to learn a little bit more about the story and the illustrations. So let me read from you a little bit of the author's note and the illustrator's note. So first, we'll start with the author's note. Here we go. This story is about the power of memory not just the beautiful memories like the ones my mother and father had about eating watercress in China, but also the difficult ones. The memories that are sometimes too painful to share. It starts with my own distressing memory of being made to pick watercress that was growing wild by the side of the road. As the child of Chinese immigrants growing up in a small, mostly white town in Ohio, I was very aware of how different my family and I were from everyone else. It's hard to feel like you don't belong and collecting food from muddy roadside ditch just made that bad feeling more intense for me. Something my very practical parents didn't understand. When I was young, my parents didn't talk about their memories of China, of growing up poor, losing siblings and surviving war. I don't blame them. These are very difficult topics to discuss with children, but it's important too, for children to understand their family history. Perhaps if I had known about the hardships they had faced, I would have been more compassionate as a child. Maybe I would have felt more empathy and less anger, more pride in my heritage and less shame. Memories have the power to inform, to inspire, and to heal. This story is both an apology and a love letter to my parents. It's also an encouragement to all children who feel different and to families with difficult paths. Share your memories. Tell your stories. They are essential. A.W. And that was the note from the author. Now let's read a note from the artist. When I first read Watercress, I was impressed by how Andrea was able to fold so many layers of memory, culture, and emotion into a short text, and I wanted the illustrations to complement each of those layers. I wanted the art to reflect the American and Chinese heritage of the characters. I chose to paint in watercolor because it's common to both Chinese and Western art, and I used both Chinese and Western brushes. The color palette is heavy in yellow ochre, which reminds me of old photographs and 1970s decor, and cerulean blue, which is similar to the blue often used in Chinese paintings. Traditional Chinese landscape paintings feature mountains, painted with the soft marks that create a dreamlike quality. This technique seemed appropriate for implying memory, so I included many soft washes throughout the book. It is common for children of immigrants to be unaware of their parents' stories and culture, and to feel out of place, misunderstood, and even angry. My own father, also a child of Chinese immigrants, rejected Chinese food when he was young in an effort to try and fit in. 
These feelings, especially the anxiety that comes from feeling different, are not limited to immigrants and their children. They are universal. When I was painting, I drew on my own memories of exclusion, loss, and guilt with the hope that they might seep into the art and add another layer to Andrea's remarkable story, J.C. Well, friends, thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed Watercress. Take care and stay safe.